I actually think the most valuable thing I've learned in my gap seasons is how to stop outsourcing my power and my intuition to other people. No one actually knows the right path for me other than myself. And I don't get to see the entire path. I just see the next step or two. And then I have to trust the process enough to take that step. As we round out this conversation about what it really feels like to be in the gap, what's so interesting about this season, and we've talked about this, if you've followed along on this series, you've been following along as I've talked about this gap season in between when you've left a previous version of yourself, you're in the midst of personal transformation, you haven't fully embodied the next version of yourself, and this season inherently is one that for most of us involves slowing down so we can observe our old patterns and shift the ones that we don't wanna take into the next season with us and, and then reintegrate some new habits. So in the midst of that, it can feel kind of confusing how you should be showing up and taking action. And so we're gonna talk about this today because I do think that the gap is a season that's gonna mirror back to us where our greatest opportunity for growth lies. So those of you who are like me, where you were very uncomfortable with the thought of slowing down and you're noticing that you're feeling a lot of triggers at the thought of just doing less. That's for a reason and it's inviting you to explore what are some of the deeper fears and beliefs underlying that restlessness. And I don't think we have to completely abandon who we are. I haven't completely slowed down and stopped doing any action. But most of my growth in this season has come from the periods of time and the spaces where I've just taken more space. Now, on the flip side, if you're someone who has been a little bit stalled, maybe you're kind of avoiding action and you're noticing that you can't keep moving forward in the way you've been, you've been going, then the gap for you might be a season where you stop doing the things that numb you out or have you avoid action, and you're actually doing more of the productive activities that you'd been avoiding in your last season. So you can kind of hear what I'm saying. This is gonna require you to have a healthy level of self-awareness about where your patterns, maybe they even worked for you in the past, but they just can't be the same patterns that are gonna usher you into this next season. And for me, before I even realized that I was in the gap, what I started to notice at the beginning of last year was just this intuitive nudge to slow down a little bit, to do less, and to focus more time and energy on who I was becoming, not knowing where that journey was gonna lead me. And it led me into this season where I've, I've realized now there's a lot of deep things that are being processed, a lot of preparation for the next season. And part of what I've been breaking is this belief that I can't achieve results if I'm not directly working really hard toward those results. It's not a bad thing. It's actually one of my favorite things about myself. I'm very productive. I get things done. I'm like the stereotypical busy person. If you want to get something done, give it to a busy person because they're going to be the one to do it. So the limit to that belief is that there is a physical limit to the time and energy I can spend working. So if I was continuing to create results within this paradigm that results only happen when I'm working really hard, I'm gonna hit a ceiling or my health is gonna start to suffer or my relationships are gonna start to suffer. So for me, the undoing of this gap season has been in being willing to offer that belief up to be rewritten and then having to learn, I, I honestly feel like I'm learning all over again what it looks like to produce results, to tap into the part of myself that I love, my ambition and my drive, but do it in a much different way where I'm focusing on becoming a match for the things that I want and then taking the aligned action when I see to take it. But I'm no longer taking action just to validate myself or feel like I'm working hard enough. And there are some of you who are in that space right along with me where you realize that, yeah, you can keep grinding it out and you can probably still incrementally increase the results you're getting. But in order to take like a quantum leap to a new level and do it 
while preserving the sense of freedom that you want within your business and to have the kind of relationships you want, the kind of health you want, it's, it's not going to be done by working the same way you've always worked. So what it looks like to take action in the gap is going to vary depending upon what your lesson for this season is. But I'm going to dive into some of the questions that you all submitted because I, I feel like these are going to hit on a lot of themes that we can all resonate with in one way or another. And this first question is one where when I read it, I was like, hi, it's me. This, is, this was my question a year ago. And it was, it was submitted by Catherine Boyle. She just asked, any advice for what to do when you're in the gap? I struggle with feeling like I'm just doing nothing. I feel this so hard. I remember talking with another friend actually during our expanders retreat when we were talking about like the value of creating space and she was like, okay, but what do you do? And anyone who feels really seen right now, any of my fellow overachievers, highly ambitious people, you know that like doing nothing is actually the most excruciating thing in the entire world. So I'm going to answer this as someone who found rest very unproductive. Like I would actually love to find a more productive way to rest if I had it my way. So it took me a while to settle into actually being able to enjoy space, being able to enjoy periods of time, not long periods, but periods of time where I start my day by not having anything on my calendar. The first thing that I did was I realized that it wasn't that I was just going to be doing nothing. I realized that for my mind, I actually needed to have something that I was using that time intentionally for. Within that, then I started to look at, well, okay, I feel really drawn, again, breaking old patterns. I feel like I want to just sit in front of my laptop. And when I would do that, it wasn't like I was actually moving things forward in the business. It only would take me a short amount of time to do the action that I needed to take, the needle moving action. So instead I would say, okay, everything in me wants right now would normally at this time of day be sitting in front of my laptop, kind of like clearing out my inbox, but I'm not actually accomplishing something with intention. So instead I would start to interrupt that pattern. And the question I kept asking myself is what did I love to do? Like when I was a kid, because as an adult, honestly, my hobby and what I love to do is I, I love to work on my business. There are other things that I love, but, you know, shopping is one of them. And my, my bank account really wouldn't appreciate if I just filled all this extra time I created with more shopping. That was actually kind of like a numbing technique. So instead it was, okay, well, what's something that can I either go and learn something new? Can I try something new? Or can I reconnect with what I used to love to do? So things like dance classes, Things like, you know, going for long walks and if I passed by a park, like pausing and going to the park and like going on the swings because I used to love that as a kid. So for me, it's been really, really helpful to pick up hobbies, especially for me that tap me back into my creative nature. And it's not like I'm doing them every day, but it felt like a more intentional way to use the space that I was creating. And then the other thing that I really love to do with that time is to do more of like the inner work. I've mentioned programs that I am working with like To Be Magnetic, they have journaling and meditations and things like that. So, you know, yeah, it's still something that feels productive to me, but it's getting to know myself on a deeper level. So I think the whole point of the gap is if you want new results, you're going to have to take new actions. So what's a new action for you? Especially if doing something fun sounds excruciating, then that's your homework. Go and find something fun to do and explore, get curious about why it feels so difficult. What are the beliefs that show up? What do you think about yourself? Like if you were to take a whole day off and not work, what do you believe that means about you? And I think in that, in doing new actions and noticing what shows up, in our minds, in our consciousness, you know, what we feel about ourselves as we take those new actions, that is very revealing for something that the gap is just inviting you to explore. So I get it. It's still not super fun for me to just rest, but I, I say this as someone who really used to hate rest and just doing nothing. I kind of like it now. I <laughs> actually, I've found a home within not being productive. And it's, it's actually been beautiful to see that nothing in my business has suffered as a result. 
I can do nothing and my business still moves forward because in the times that I'm working, I'm working really intentionally. The second question, Courtney Randolph asked, how do you know what the right next steps to take even are? This is such a good question. And the truth is, I'm just gonna be real, you don't actually know with 100% certainty. Anyone out there who tells you, like, yes, they might have a framework that they followed, but anyone who's giving you a framework, it's because they did it by trial and error, and then they came up with the framework retroactively looking back at their process. So when you're in especially a transformation season, a gap season, you don't actually know with 100% certainty if the action you're taking is the right action or not. But what I found for myself is because I'm slowing down, I'm doing things like meditation, journaling, all the things that I've shared that are helping me connect with my intuition. And because there's more space and my mind is in a more relaxed state, I pay attention to where I get the little intuitive nudge to take an action. And what's interesting is a lot of times those actions don't seem earth shattering. It's not like a whole 10 step plan. It's hey, go and work at this coffee shop today. And I just happen to know that like, okay, I'm working on writing emails today, but I'm gonna go get out and I'm gonna put myself into new energy. It doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, I did, I, I did this action. I went to the new coffee shop. I met this perfect person who I needed to align with on this project. No, it's noticing the promptings and trusting them, even if there's not an immediate payoff. But this idea of like, taking the wrong or right action doesn't, there is no such thing as one right action. There's learning to connect with your intuition, which the gap is inviting us to do, taking the actions that we see to take without overthinking them too much. And then yes, it can be really valuable if you're working with a mentor or working within a program that they're offering you next steps to take. But I, I actually think the most valuable thing I've learned in my gap seasons in the past, in the current one, is how to stop outsourcing my power and my intuition to other people. No one actually knows the right path for me other than myself, and I don't get to see the entire path. I just see the next step or two, and then I have to trust the process enough to take that step. The next question was submitted by Brittany Hall, and this is a good one too, of kind of catching yourself in the old patterns. And she just asked, how do you know when it's still time to be in the gap versus allowing imposter syndrome or whatever those limiting beliefs are to prevent us from moving forward? I think it's important to kind of be able to have enough self-awareness to see where you know, you might get to a period where you're still kind of clinging onto the gap because the gap, even though it's uncomfortable, starts to feel more comfortable than maybe, you know, as you connect with your intuition, it's, it's asking you to do some pretty bold things. And you're almost using the gap as a defense mechanism and excuse to not be moving forward. Let me be clear, the gap is not a season that is void of any action. The gap is an invitation to stop doing the shit that you use to avoid yourself, avoid your feelings, avoid your growth and clear space so you can be taking new action, but it does require action. So anything in the gap that's talking you into completely pulling back, there's gonna be a few exceptions to this maybe, but my experience with the gap is not that it's asking me to completely stop everything I'm doing and take no action. I think that's where we have to be able to distinguish what's the voice of intuition, which, which is the voice of fear. And I talked about this in the fear episode of this series. So maybe go back and listen to that. Really connect with your own intuition, because I even think my intuition is pretty clear, like, okay, is this me sabotaging? Is this me cute quitting? Or is it just still time for me to settle into the gap and I'm trying to rush my way through it? So you want to kind of get used to feeling your way through the energy that you are embodying. And then if you're willing to hold yourself accountable with an accountability partner, or, you know, it has to be someone who really understands the process you're going through and they're also in it with you. I think there's, there's certain people that are the right kind of accountability for a season like this, but it's not a bad idea to have someone who's going to call you out 
if you kind of keep using the same reason to not take action or you're defaulting to old patterns, sometimes it's just easier for another person outside of ourselves to catch it and spot it faster. But for the most part, and, and Brittany went on to give some examples like, okay, there's all these other things I want to accomplish before I fully allow myself to come out of the gap, like reorganizing things in my home or other projects. And, you know, the truth is, I think in the way you're asking this, Brittany, you do know your answer. You know that those things can equally be a productive outlet and they can equally also turn into a reason to avoid the real action you're supposed to take. However, I do think sometimes there's other ancillary actions that don't directly relate to our purpose that are supportive in the gap season. Organizing your physical space being one of them, but it's like, okay, great, spend an hour doing that. Don't let yourself spend a week doing that, if that makes sense. So I think our intuition usually knows are we gaslighting ourselves and like we're just using this as an excuse to not take action or are we just really in the work and it's not feeling like it's moving the needle in a significant way and we're just getting restless? That's how it's looked for me at least. And then this last question, Emily Stubing had emailed us and I'm so grateful because it made me realize that there were probably a lot more questions about the gap season and that's actually what prompted us to ask the text community to write in with questions and turned into this whole series of episodes. So Emily, thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you so much for submitting your question. And it's such a good one because we've talked a lot about like the subconscious reprogramming that is a part of a gap season. There's a lot of reprogramming that often happens and the depth of which and the time it takes really depends on the depth of transformation that you're calling in and how how quickly you want to lean into the uncomfortable work of reprogramming. But Emily was sharing how she's done a lot of that, spent the first few months of the year doing the subconscious reprogramming work, and now is kind of feeling like she messed up by not taking action on the downloads that she was getting immediately. So the question is really, you know, there's a time for the subconscious work and that's valid, but how do you start to move out of the periods of inner work and get back into action? And my true answer to this is I, I actually think they happen simultaneously, but I do think there's a period where when you're actually getting to the root of what the subconscious reprogramming is going to clear, you notice you have so much more space and energy for action. So if you haven't quite hit that point where there's like a big feeling of like being unblocked and being in momentum again, and now you can clearly see what your old patterns were and you're not returning back to them, then maybe there's still more of the subconscious unblocking to do. But while you're doing it, at least in, in my experience, because you mentioned specifically using tools like breathwork, hypno breathwork, it sounds like you work with the mastery program, which we love. And in mastery, which is a hypno breathwork um, methodology, I guess, developed by a good friend of mine, Francesca Sitma, part of a breathwork session, which is anywhere from eight to like 20 minutes, is at the end really being prompted to notice what intuitive action you were prompted with and then taking that action immediately. So the other element that Emily mentioned, which I think is relatable, is you know, is it ever too late? Like, can I miss the boat on taking action? And I do think like if, if you're in a place that's stalled, you feel like you don't feel the momentum because you haven't been in action. The place to start is to go and clean up anywhere that you were prompted with an action and you didn't take it. And now the energy of knowing that you didn't keep your word to yourself is actually the thing that's slowing you down. It's, it's not even the lack of action as much as it is the way we beat ourselves up for not having taken action. So it's not so much like how do you shift from the subconscious to now taking action. I don't think we ever stop the action. I think give yourself grace. If you're on a growth journey, there are plenty of days where I kind of know what I should do and I don't necessarily do it. But the way you create momentum again is start small, Start with cleaning up some of those actions that you knew you were prompted to take, 
continue with your subconscious work now with the new commitment that when I get prompted with an action, I'm going to take it. And then notice where if you're kind of still dancing around the same subconscious block or belief and it hasn't shifted in like a really measurable way, I think some of them take more time, but maybe be willing to look a little bit deeper. This is where you could try a different protocol. Maybe you could try working with a professional and just seeing if there's more of a sense of freedom you can create around that because it should be pretty obvious that there's a point where more momentum starts to happen. And I remember asking my therapist this the other day because we've been going pretty deep. We've been going into some really deep fears and things that I, I was really afraid to look at. And she, she was just encouraging me to like fully go to the depths of feeling all the feelings. And then she mentioned, she's like, and you're gonna hit the bottom of kind of like this, if you wanna think of it like a pit of the grief or the whatever it is that you're bumping up against. And you'll notice that like when you clear those emotions, there's actually freedom. You feel energetically like it frees something. And I remember saying to her through my tears, because we had just worked through, you know, one layer of a block that I was bumping up against. I said, is there actually a bottom? Like, tell me this ends. And what I realized is I, I kept like kind of holding my breath, waiting like, OK, if I lean into this uncomfortable thing, then can I finally be free? And she just so calmly and so patiently said, yes, there is. And the less you know, I, I'm realizing that the less I fear, just fully going there and fully letting myself transform, the faster it probably happens. I'll keep you posted on that. I'm not really sure if that's, if that's accurate or not. But what I can feel is that I'm the one slowing down some of the process because I'm like, okay, shoot, I just uncovered like this big subconscious block. And now I'm taking an integration period where I'm kind of letting the lesson marinate, kind of learning to find my footing within these new habits. But I haven't actually gone to the edge of like all the emotion that I was supposed to process around it. It's a process. So, you know, I think there are seasons where there's more subconscious work, more external action. And then you'll really know when you've done the depth of the unblocking and the rewiring because you start to naturally feel the momentum. And I'm getting to a phase right now where I feel a new momentum and a lightness because I was willing to stay much longer than was comfortable in the seasons where I was doing a lot of the internal work. And I'm still not out of it. So that's the level that I understand how to answer Emily's question today. And, you know, I'm, I'm in this journey with you. If you're in the gap and you've been on this journey with me and you're kind of wondering when it's going to end, I think the beauty might be found in finding gratitude and it's easier said than done, but just kind of being really present and grateful for the moment and the opportunity to expand. And having gratitude for yourself for being willing to lean into this transformation journey because you could just as easily choose not to. And so I just keep saying to friends who were kind of in this similar season and, you know, we're really in it. We're going through it. Just like this is true warrior shit right here. And if you're in it with me, that means you're also a warrior and it helps me at least, I hope it helps you too, at least to know that you aren't in this alone.